Six months ago, back in April, Michigan Republicans took offense to the school curriculum across the state. I best bet you can guess the educational content that they were angry about. Anything having to do with slavery, racism, or LGBTQ issues. So, during a meeting in the state Senate chambers, Republican lawmakers proposed their own version of Florida's so-called Don't Say Gay Bill. State Senator Mallory McMorrow, a Democrat, joined two of her colleagues in walking out in protest. In response, the Republican State Senator Lena Tice released a statement saying Democrats weren't protecting children from the, quote, danger of progressive indoctrination. But Tice wasn't done just yet. Soon after, State Senator Tice sent out a campaign fundraising email calling out McMorrow by name. The email said, quote, these are the people we are up against. Progressive social media trolls like Senator Mallory McMorrow, D. Snowflake, who are outraged they can't teach, can't groom and sexualize kindergartners or that eight-year-olds are responsible for slavery. Someone actually wrote that in an email and, or in a, in a campaign document and, and distributed it. However, it was what happened next that really got the nation's attention. The state Senator McMorrow returned to the chamber and addressed her colleagues head on with a speech that would soon go viral. I didn't expect to wake up yesterday to the news that the senator from the 22nd district had overnight accused me by name of grooming and sexualizing children in an email fundraising for herself. I am a straight, white, Christian, married, suburban mom who knows that the very notion that learning about slavery or redlining or systemic racism somehow means that children are being taught to feel bad or hate themselves because they are white is absolute nonsense. I want every child in this state to feel seen, heard, and supported, not marginalized and targeted because they are not straight, white, and Christian. We cannot let hateful people tell you otherwise to scapegoat and deflect from the fact that they are not doing anything to fix the real issues that impact people's lives. And I know that hate will only win if people like me stand by and let it happen. So I want to be very clear right now. Call me whatever you want. I hope you brought in a few dollars. I hope it made you sleep good last night. I know who I am. I know what faith and service means and what it calls for in this moment. We will not let hate win. David Remnick subsequently wrote a piece about McMorrow in The New Yorker calling her a role model for midterms, arguing that she just might be showing Democrats the path to successfully doing battle with the Trump-obsessed conspiracy-peddling culture warriors on the right. He writes, quote, she did her an heroic thing in the Michigan State Senate. The country is in real need of many such acts, many such heroes. State Senator Mallory McMorrow of Michigan joins me now. The one advantage of you being a, a social media troll is that you said you were going to be on the show, so I bet a whole bunch of people are watching <laughs> us this morning. Thank you for being here. Glad to be here. You decided to do something which is interesting because uh, these culture wars are not necessarily something that, that you would choose to be involved in, no. but they went at you uh, and what you stood for, and you walked back in after a walkout to, to take it on directly. Is that the right choice? And, and, and having thought about it in hindsight, are you, are you glad that you did that? I am glad that I did that. And this is exactly what we have to do, because part of what I wanted to reveal is the GOP has no platform right now. It's nothing but hate, attacking vulnerable kids, lying about the election, and not actually doing anything to help everyday people. And if we don't blow that up, then we lose the narrative. The stuff that you were accused of doing was was QAnon type stuff. It was it was conspiracy theory stuff, grooming, sexualizing, stuff like that. This is not a reasonable discussion about uh, to what degree do we talk about slavery, to what degree do we talk about uh, LGBT issue, issues. This was a whole different thing. They were they were painting you into a corner that conspiracy minded people do respond to. Exactly. And this was not a policy discussion at all. And we've seen the worst of that right here in Michigan when we had the first protest well before January 6th with armed gunmen in our state capitol, Boogaloo Boys, Three Percenters, Oath Keepers, who hear this language as a signal to take action. And this is what we have to do to take our country back, stop the violence, and get back to policy discussion. So you just said something really interesting, the signal to take action, which is, by the way, the conversation we're having about January 6th. Did somebody really tell these people to go there, or have they been set up to say they're calling for us? Michigan is 
a lot of people don't really get this in America, but it's ground zero for this so-called militia activity, which is not Ill- which is not legal. It's not really a thing. You're not allowed to take up arms to do the government's work in America. And yet you have people who sort of live that life here. We do. And, and we tried to sound the alarm when we saw the protest here. I wrote an op-ed for NBC News that went national about that this was a warning, that this was something much darker than people being angry about COVID. And it felt brushed aside. It felt like people talked about it, looking at us like a novelty, like what's happening in Michigan. And then we saw January 6th happen. So these are the trend lines. And this is why we have to take a look at our state legislature, take it back and start to right the ship starting right here in Michigan. Often state legislatures historically have been a place where you can do that because policy actually has to get made. Obviously, with the, the, the cesspool that sometimes politics has become, the state legislatures are now the front line of these culture wars. How do you get back? How do you pull back from from the polarization that we've got in America in these moments? So right now, the Michigan GOP has taken over in a way that is probably more extreme than anywhere else in the country. But we have an opportunity here with independent redistricting to flip the Michigan State Senate to Democratic control for the first time since 1984. And if we do that, my theory is that shakes the GOP back to a place where we have to debate policy, that you can't lie, you can't target people, and it's not going to win. Definitely not here and definitely not in the country. Right. And and have to debate policy is important. In this show, we've talked about uh, inflation, how uh, everybody's blaming it on on Joe Biden and the Democrats and, and, and these culture wars. In the end... How do you, when you're out there campaigning, when you're talking to your constituents and they say things like, well, I can't vote Democrat because they're responsible for inflation or I can't do this because uh, I wasn't responsible for slavery or they're going to make our kids uh, uh, proposal three is going to make it so that my kids can have uh, gender uh, reassignment surgery without my input. None of this is actually true. But how do you have that debate with, with people who come to you about it? We have to go on the offense. We have to meet people where they are, and we have to work these things down. Prop 3 is a great example. Prop 3 effectively codifies Roe in the state of Michigan and finally gives women back the ability to make decisions about your own body. They don't want to have that debate because they know they're losing. So they're lying about gender reassignment surgery, taking away parental consent, and we have to expose those lies. Well, thank you for the work that you're doing. Uh, and and thank you for uh, joining us this morning. We appreciate it. Thank you. And thank you for getting us some extra viewers by cool. tweeting that you're coming out this morning. <laughs> the Democratic uh, Michigan uh, State Senator Mallory McMorrow. You can actually look up the, the speech of which we ran some bits here uh, that went viral after she took a stand on the protection of the rights of children in this state.